Hello world, this is Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor from Johnson County Community College. And here we are at javascript.info and we're going to cover part one, section 1.2, code editors. It's a very short little chapter, but like all of them, it's packed full of great information. What I most like about this chapter is that it differentiates between a code editor and an IDE, an integrated development environment. Both terms are used for software that we use to write programming code. I personally do not care which code editor or IDE you use to write your JavaScript for my class, but typically we stick to a mere code editor for HTML, CSS, and JavaScript because after all, we can run and execute that code in any modern browser. So we don't need the compilers and the server-side tools that an IDE like Eclipse or WebStorm or NetBeans provides to write HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. We just need a good color coding code editor, and then we open our files and run them and debug them in any browser. My favorite code editor is Notepad++. It's simple, it color codes the HTML and the content very clearly, but I am trying to up my game and go to Visual Studio. Visual Studio is a little bit more complex. It's still on the code editor side of things because it doesn't have all the extra compilers and database support of a full IDE, but it does provide a directory tree here on the left and some software tools that a simple code editor such as Notepad++ does not allow. Brackets is another very popular tool. Sublime is a very inexpensive tool that works on both Windows and Mac the same. I'm going to probably be using Visual Studio for many of my demonstrations from here on though. Now, if you also want to go to Visual Studio, be sure you download it. And then when you download it and look at the software, go into the help menu and find the introductory videos. And that will give you an overview of all the different ways you can use Visual Studio, how you can customize it if you don't like that dark background, the different extensions, the different languages that it supports, and how it makes your life as a developer easier. For example, when I'm in Notepad++, if I put in the opening head tag here on this web page, you'll see that the closing head tag, I have to type in from the keyboard. That isn't automatically given to me. If I go over to Visual Studio though, and I open up that head tag, then the closing tag is automatically provided for me. Very handy. So there's a feature called IntelliSense. It intelligently senses what you're doing and attempts to help you. And that feature is just a little bit more developed in Visual Studio Code. Now, if you also want to use Visual Studio Code, when you go to use it in our labs or on your computer. Be careful that you don't use Visual Studio 2015 or 2017 or 2019. Those are the IDE versions of Visual Studio. Visual Studio Code is the code editor version of Visual Studio. And it's not that you can't write your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in an IDE. You can't. There's just a lot of different menus and windows and tools that you don't need. So if you're writing front-end languages of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, you might as well just use a code editor. It just keeps things cleaner and then open your code in a web page to display and debug. So enjoy this short little chapter and let us know what code editor or tool you're using at our class discussion websites. Thank you.